Okay. For some very short backstory, I became homeless at 16, and through some help, I found a place for people between 16 and 25. They gave me a house to stay in, until I could find myself a permanent place to live. I was put in a rough area close to the center, where I could get help and so on. This is the first of many stories of my roommates at Rush. The first one was my first ever roommate. The house was shared with the exception of the bedrooms, which had fireproof doors with locks on them. My room was the larger of the two, and the smaller room was where my roommate lived. The first day of her moving in, our houseworker comes around and introduces me to Holly. Holly was a large girl who was about 22 to 24 at the time, and played the sweet, aw, you're only 16, bless you, kind of role. She said she would look after me to the worker. I smiled and did it all back, but I already had the feeling she wasn't someone I wanted to look after me at all. She just had a creepy feel, like she was too over the top sweet and trying to hide something. After the little intro, we never really spoke a lot. When I was downstairs, she stayed upstairs, and when I went into my room, she went downstairs. It didn't bother me since Friday to Sunday she was out getting wasted, so I pretty much had the house to myself. One day, I sat downstairs watching a bit of Jezza Kyle to make myself feel a bit better. I was in, and I hear her stomping downstairs. She opens the door quickly and tries to make some small talk. You know, where are you from? Why did you leave? Blah blah blah, that kind of stuff. After about 10 minutes of her talking about ex-boyfriends and intimate shit I didn't care for, she comes out with, Are you a virgin? I stared at her for a good 5 seconds and reply, That's a pretty fucked up question to ask a 16 year old. She just sort of laughed it off. We're both girls here, what does it matter? I get up and tell her that I'm not really into girly chats. She stands up out of the way, and I nope it back to my room, thinking, thank the lord it's Friday. Fast forward to about 1am, where I was sat in bed reading a magazine, where the front door bangs, followed by, shit, shh, come into the living room. At this point, I'm just thinking, for fuck's sake, there goes my Saturday morning of chilling in the house. Suddenly though, I hear hushed and fast talking. I stay quiet on the bed, listening, when a man's voice replies to the whisper. I'm not paying 300 if you don't know, and it's 150 if it's a no. His foreign accent sounds pissed, to say the least, but Holly becomes equally irritated too. I asked, but she didn't say yes or no, which probably means yes. She only just turned 16. A second man chimes in with the same accent but a more serious tone. So she is 16. I hear Holly stand up. Yes, now give me the 300 or fuck off. No skin off my nose, there are others out there. As soon as he said 16, I knew he was talking about me. My heart hit the floor and I sat frozen on my bed, praying that I had locked my bedroom door. I heard her heavy footsteps slowly come up the stairs and every step up I felt a cold chill. Hey, you awake? She slurred. She did a pretty good impression of being wrecked, but I stayed silent, hoping she thought I'd gone out. Hello? The handle wobbled, but like a fucking idiot, my door wasn't locked, and it came open. I don't think I've ever thrown myself out of bed so fast in my life. I slammed that door hard enough that she fell back into the hall. I thanked Rush for making my side of my door have a twist lock, and laid myself flat against the door. She tried to play it off cool. Oh, shit, sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. I was just checking in on you. Now, my teen angst got the better of me, so I sat as confident as I could back. Go away, and take whoever the hell you're with away, too. By this point, she realized I knew shit was going down, 
and she started banging her fist on my door, screaming and shouting for me to open up. She started almost begging when the two guys came charging up the stairs, and the second man took on the most soothing tone he could. Hey, we just want to talk about something. That's all. Holly is really upset, and we need your help. Fuck off, or I'll call the police, is all I could muster back. With what phone? Holly laughed, scoffing, and the guys let out a quick laugh too. One of them leant against the door on the other side, and without wavering stated, If you open the door, it will be better than if you don't, and we have to kick it down. I didn't have a witty comeback or even the strength to say no. I was 16, and if they got in, I didn't stand a chance. Both the guys set off in what I guess was their native tongue. A minute passed of this, until I was caught off guard by blow after blow on my door. I backed away, and the door made a noise which indicated that it couldn't take two guys kicking it in. I scanned around the room frantically, as I dashed to the other side, looking for my window keys. I grabbed them from my jeans and fumbled with the window, and screamed like I'd never screamed before. They stopped banging and realized I wasn't worth the jail time, I guess. And me screaming like that is going to have everyone opening up their front doors to nosy at what's happening. I hear the stampede down the stairs, and the back door swings open and then slams shut. I stopped screaming, and slid down the wall into a little ball. I have no idea how long I was sat there, just thinking in what-ifs, and I didn't stop what-ifing until the sun came up. I ran downstairs, chained and bolted the front and back doors, and then hid away for a week. Holly and the two men never came back. She didn't leave anything behind except clothes, and I didn't tell the rush house what happened until they came around on a house check and saw the fate of my door. By then, it had already been a month, and now that I'm older, I wonder what the fuck they've been doing since. Long story short, the only reason my new roommate wanted to know so much about me and be friendly was so she could sell me for sex to two blokes. I had been having problems with my dorm roommate since the beginning of the semester. She didn't shower or wash her clothes regularly, left dry top ramen noodles all over the floor for me to step on, didn't wash her hands or flush the toilet, sighed in a way that sounded like sex noises constantly, and showered with the door open. She always got water everywhere too, and so many more things that I hated. Basically, every single pet peeve I had was born in this girl. At first, I blamed it on her not understanding American etiquette. She's a foreign exchange student from China. But then things started to get creepy. When I went home for the weekend a few weeks into the semester, I gave her a heads up that I would be gone. She did that weird sex sigh again and looked sad and betrayed at the same time, like I was doing something wrong by leaving her. She said something along the lines of, Why are you leaving me? I don't like sleeping in the room by myself. I feel more comfortable with you here with me. Mind you that I only met this chick on move-in day and only said a few words to her. I should have known to keep my guard up after that. Every once in a while, she would stare off into space longingly for half an hour. Sometimes I would catch her watching me study out of the corner of my eye. After a long day of studying in the library, I went to the patio in our dorm to get some eyes from the machine, and found her with her head on a table with her eyes wide open, staring at something in the distance. I think she scared off the guy I like, because he stopped coming around to see me once he found out she was my roommate. After she creeped me out so much, I started staying away from my dorm, only going to sleep and grab things I needed. She seemed like a nice person, but I couldn't stand living with her anymore. Today I emailed my RD that I wanted a room change. I told her that I wasn't comfortable living in my dorm anymore with this girl. I was sitting in my room while my roommate was out today, when I hear a banging on the door. I was then greeted by two solemn-looking campus police officers and the RD of my building. They calmly asked me where my roommate was, but I had no idea. I told them of her usual lurking spots and went back to what I was doing, 
but I knew something was off. I asked them what was up and they just ignored my question and asked where she might have been. The police officers at my campus are usually really pleasant too, since there isn't much crime at my campus and they don't have much to do. 30 minutes later, I hear banging on the door again. I'm greeted by my roommate who has tears streaming down her face. She rushes past me onto her bed and plops down. She starts wailing, screaming, and eventually hyperventilating. I thought maybe someone close to her had died and was feeling sorry that I had asked for a room change during her time of need. I could only make out a few pieces of what she was saying to the RD. Stuff like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, and I promise I won't do it again. The police officer pulled me aside and quietly asks if there is anything in the room she can hurt herself with. I gesture to her drawer where I know I have seen a small knife with a wooden sheath on occasion. He went through the drawer but didn't find anything, and suddenly she was right behind him screaming, Don't you dare go through my things! Miss, we don't want you to harm yourself, just please calm down. You think I'm gonna harm my roommate? I wouldn't do that, she's just silly. I'm not going to hurt anyone, I just want to be left alone. By then, the RD had dragged me out of the room and told me what was going on. She got into a big fight with her best friend, I didn't think she'd had any, and started sending her threatening emails, and even threatened to kill herself. By this time, I was in complete shock. I was seeing someone completely lose it right in front of me. She told me that she had received my room change request, and was going to meet with me tomorrow. I told her I would stay with a friend for the night. After my roommate had calmed down a bit, I went into the room where two RDs were talking to her to quickly pack a night bag. She apologized for acting so crazy and I half-heartedly accepted, grabbed my shit and got out of there. I was waiting in my dorm common area for my friend to get back to her dorm when I realized I had forgotten a blanket. I went inside thinking that someone was going to be in the room keeping an eye over her but she was all alone. She glared at me as I walked past her to grab my blanket. There was pure hatred in her eyes. Where are you going? I had never heard her use this tone of voice with anyone before. She was livid. I'm just going to stay with my friend for the night. Why? Because of me? I swear I saw smoke rising from the top of her head, and a vein in her forehead was about to burst. A uh, sleepover, I said in the happiest tone I could muster. We have a midterm on Friday. It wasn't completely untrue, and I'm just glad I was quick on my feet. I got out of there and nearly ran to my friend's dorm. I talked to the RD, and there were no more rooms open in my housing complex. If I wanted to move to another complex, my parents would have to pay an extra thousand dollars. They were furious and wanted me to move immediately because the police officers were so incompetent. They jeopardized my safety by asking that question in front of her. They don't want to pay for me to change rooms because it was my university's fault for putting me in this awkward situation. I'm just afraid that my roommate is going to take this out on me. I don't think I can return to my dorm. She looked like she was out for blood when I came back. So this story didn't happen to me, it actually happened to my very good friend who we'll call Dan. Dan is a 5 foot 10 inch male from Maryland. He has a very strange sense of humor, and he's very smart but an all around good guy. Anyway, we go to the same university. I'm going to tell this story as best as I remember it, so please bear with me. Dan moved into his dorm room before his roommate did in our freshman year. Dan had everything all moved in, and settled, and just as he sat down, his roommate showed up to move everything in. His roommate, whom we'll call Brian, introduced himself and his mother and father, who were helping him move much like any other person. Dan decided to help his new roommate move everything in, since he didn't know anyone yet, as he was from a different state. So Dan and Brian's family get down to their car, as Brian stayed behind in the room to put things away. This is the first red flag of this story. As they open the trunk, Brian's father looks at Dan directly in the face and says, 
good luck. Dan, thinking he meant with classes, said thanks and grabbed a box. Boy, was he wrong. Dan carried that box upstairs and into the room where Brian proceeded to flip out. He screamed about how that box had his special ingredients for a project he was doing, and Dan probably broke it. Weird, but everyone has their quirks. They finished moving Brian in, and his parents said goodbye. And again, Brian's dad told Dan good luck. This was really weird. But anyway, a couple of guys came by the door to ask if they wanted to go eat. And Dan said sure, but Brian stayed behind to finish unpacking his stuff. While Dan was eating, he gets a call from Brian asking if he would mind if he smoked weed in the room. Dan, being that he wants to work for the CDC, said absolutely not. Brian screamed something unintelligible and hung up the phone. He called him back a few minutes later and asked if he could smoke weed in the closet. Again, Dan said no, and Brian hung up without a word. Dan and his friends decided to go make sure he wasn't actually smoking weed in the room. When they got there, they found him in the closet eating the weed. Weird as hell, right? Not even close to as bad as this will get. At night, Brian would wake Dan up by standing beside his bed, then asking him one question. Dan would answer and Brian would walk back to his bed and go to sleep. This happened every night for a week. At this point, Brian had moved in an entire toolbox full of wrenches, screwdrivers, hammers, nails, screws, and an assortment of power tools. Things that definitely weren't needed in a dorm room. During this entire week, Brian never left the room either. The only time he would leave was to go out and eat or go to the bathroom. About four days before the week where dorm room changes could be made, Brian woke Dan up in the middle of the night and asked him how he felt about gay people. Dan said he didn't really care what anyone did and it was fine with him. He woke up the next morning with Brian sitting in a chair directly by his head, just staring at him. Dan yelled something along the lines of, What the fuck are you doing? And Brian replied, I'm starting to have feelings for you. You need to move out. I don't want you getting hurt during what's coming. After that, Dan left and didn't sleep in his room for a couple of days until he could move. Unfortunately, there were no open rooms, so he couldn't. During this time, Brian had started to follow Dan around. He would sleep in the closet with his tools, making something. Dan eventually convinced the head of the dorm to let him move out into the now empty room next door, after three weeks in what he describes as hell. Dan moves to the room next door, and that should be the end of it, right? Wrong. Two days later, Dan gets a knock at the door at 9am. At the door were four state police troopers in full hazmat gear. They let Dan put on some clothes, and then let him out the door. At the end of the hallway was Brian in handcuffs. Turns out, he had been building pipe bombs and other types of bombs in the dorm room while Dan was in class. After Dan had moved out, he took over the other bed and closet for his bomb-making activities. The reason the hazmat team was there was because Brian had spilled liquid mercury all over the floor, and they were afraid it had gotten into the other rooms. When they went through all of Brian's things, they found a plan that also had guns hidden around the city. This kid had planned a massive attack, but he had written Dan's name down with a heart around it, and wrote, Do not kill. Brian is very obviously in prison now. Okay, so I don't really know if this is the right subreddit to post this in, because I know who the creep is, but this is just freakishly creepy, and I'm a little concerned going for it. Anyway, I'm a girl who's been living with two guys off in my university's campus in an apartment. I'm going for my third year in college. For the past year. I go to a college that's out of my home state, so I had to stay off campus because I can't afford to keep moving my stuff back and forth between my house and my college. I met these two guys last year through a friend of mine, when I was looking for somewhere to live for the summer and the upcoming year. I was a little apprehensive about living with two guys, 
but my friend vouched for them real hard and the rent was really cheap, so I figured, why not, and decided to live with them. It was actually really nice at first. They were really nice guys, and I think they liked having me around too. I kept things pretty clean and tidy. There weren't any awkward advances for sex or anything, and I never felt harassed, which was really the only worry I had. So fast forward a year, and we decide that we're going to stick together as roommates, but at a different apartment. One of the guys, Alex, was going to be out of town during our planned move-out time, so we decided a couple of days ago for all three of us to move out his room and some stuff in the living room, just to get a jump start on moving things into public storage. So that day, we're moving things around, packing things, putting junk into boxes. At one point, while the guys were moving the real heavy stuff, I was organizing Alex's dresser, taking the drawers out and putting them aside so we could carry the frame easier. I was taking out one of the drawers, his underwear, socks, and belts one, when something catches my eye. It's a bra, but not just any bra. It's mine. I recognized it immediately, because it's not just a Monday going to class bra, but an expensive one that was one of my favorites, and I had thought I had lost it a long time ago. I didn't think too much of it. I just figured that I had left it in the dryer or something and it got mixed into his laundry. No big deal. But out of curiosity, I sifted around the drawer and under my bra were two panties. Yes, both mine. A slow chill comes over me, but I decide to give him the benefit of the doubt. I figured that he might have found all these mixed into his laundry, and it had just been too awkward for him to return them to me. I can understand that. I shake myself off and convince myself that that's the case, and continue to move his stuff. I find another pair in another shelf, but I don't recognize that one, which again gives me the creeps. Now I'm curious, and even though I feel guilty about it, I just had to look through his clothes. I close his door and start looking for more, and I wish I didn't. I went back to the first drawers I pulled out, and I find yet another pair of my panties, but underneath it were a couple pieces of photo paper with me on it. My heart seriously stopped when I saw it. Holy fucking shit. There were several small 4x6 photo cards. All of me. All pictures I figured he had taken from my Facebook. And I would have given them the benefit of the doubt if it weren't for the fact that they were all either bikini pictures or other sexy photos. I quickly put the pictures and pair of underwear back and cover it with this stuff. At this point, I have no idea what to do. I'm so fucking confused and scared, and I just really don't even know. I take out the rest of the drawers and put it with the others. As casually as I can, I call Alex over and ask about the first bra I found, and the really obvious one in his underwear drawer. He turns bright red and stammers something about laundry, as I figured, and asks if I've found any more. My heart is thumping, and I shake my head no. I smile and thank him for finding it for me. He says he'll finish up with his room and practically kicks me out, which really just seals up my convictions. I don't really know what to do about this. Honestly, it's been a few days since, and now that I've kind of calmed down, I'm less certain about not rooming with them next year. I don't want to go through the paperwork with canceling the lease and stuff. And really, he's such a nice guy otherwise that I'm not even sure this is an argument worth having. Anyway though, creepy roommates. Ugh. Hey, what's up guys? It's Blue Spooky here, as always. I just wanted to thank you guys so much for watching the video especially if you made it this far to the end. I also want to take a moment to give a shout out to some of my longtime fans, including Rebecca, Alicia, and all of you other guys who just leave comments that are super nice and supportive of the channel. I've kind of been going through some stuff lately, 
and I've not been having the best time. So, uh, just having you guys to talk to, and knowing the fact that you guys are so understanding, and you guys are so supportive of the work I do, it, uh, it really means a lot to me. It really does. Like a couple of days with the Q&A video, uh, some people left comments, you know, noticing that I sounded a little sadder than usual. Knowing that people notice that kind of stuff, and knowing that you guys actually care not just about me as a content creator, but actually as an individual too, uh, it really helps me get through the day sometimes, so. I just want to give you guys a super special thanks. I'm uh, super grateful that you guys allow me to do this for you all, so. Thank you guys very much, and I think I'm going to stop having this little uh, emotional spiel right now, but uh, thank you guys for helping me feel better lately, and thank you for being so supportive of the channel. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know what you think, and perhaps like, share, or subscribe if you feel so inclined. Uh, if you guys have a personal story that you'd like me to read, or any story topics that you'd like to see, please feel free to take a look in the description below. There will be links to all of my social media, including Facebook, Twitter, and Gmail. You can go ahead and send me a message on any of those, and I'll try to include your story in a video as soon as possible. Or you can just go ahead and send me a message if you want to chat a bit. I'm always up for that too. If you do decide to send in a story, please be sure to include in the tagline what the name of the story is, uh, what the theme is, and how you'd like to be credited in the description of the video the story appears in. If you guys are curious about the music used in this video, it's always listed in the description below. Uh, it's listed in order, the names of the tracks are also listed, and I have links to the artists. So if you're ever curious about the music, just go down there and check it out in the description. Uh, last final update here, uh, that secondary channel that I mentioned in the Q&A, I'm thinking about starting that up next month. I'm actually getting some uh, art done for it, so that should be done soon. And I think it's going to be real good, and I hope you guys will enjoy it when I actually do start doing that, because I'm really excited to branch out into a little more variety than just the scary stuff all the time. Last but not least, of course, if you guys have any constructive criticism, please feel free to leave it in the comments below, as I'm always looking for new ways to improve the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.